Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a pregnancy update. I am trying to do these more frequently because I really want to remember the end of this. I want to be able to look back on all of this footage and remember what this was like and all the milestones and things that I was experiencing and see my belly and everything like that. So I really wanted to document this. And also this is the kind of most exciting, scary part is the end. Up until now, sort of I can lump everything together in one sort of update, like a 20 week. And then I can talk about like the last 10 weeks, but like as time goes on, more and more is changing and I just my mental state and everything like that. And my belly is growing huge so i thought it would be fun to sit down and film another pregnancy update i'm going to be doing these more often i think the last one i did was 31 weeks and now i'm 34 i cannot believe i am 34 weeks this number sounds different it sounds more substantial it sounds more scary <laughs> this number feels more substantial it feels like i'm very close like when i hear people saying oh i'm 34 weeks pregnant you're like oh you're close close that means i have if he doesn't come early six weeks <laughs> six weeks that is a horrifying number to say when you feel so far less been prepared. I'm going to be talking about all that in this video. I'm going to get into like some things that we've purchased. Um, I did a haul recently. If you guys didn't see that, I'm going to link it up here, but I did like a full baby haul where I showed like a bunch of clothes and a bunch of items that we got. We got a lot more since that video because uh, I have so many things to talk about. I have so much like a baby shower and just, oh my gosh, some really, really cool stuff. And I'm also going to be doing a maternity clothing try on haul in this video. I'm partnering up with ThreadUp again. I've worked with them many, many times in the past and I'm gonna be doing a maternity like fall clothing try on for you guys because I'm getting to the end. Nothing fits me anymore. I have only bought two maternity items the entire time I've been pregnant because everything that I wear is a lot more on the like loose side and like all the shirts that I've been getting have just been regular shirts. I just buy them in like an extra large or an extra extra large. I wanted to do some actual maternity shopping because I'm at the end now. I feel like it's necessary and I wanted to feel cute going into the fall and winter. So I'm going to show you guys some stuff that I got from ThreadUp. If you don't know who ThreadUp is, they are the largest online thrift store. They have all of your favorite brands. They have Madewell, Zara, H&M, Free People, American Eagle, they have so many different brands. It's online thrifting, so instead of having to go to the thrift store, you just thrift online, which makes it really easy because you can sort by size, color, brand, cut. If you want a top, if you want pants, skirt, dresses, you can sort so many things out. So instead of unnecessarily rifling through things that you're not really interested in, you can really narrow it down to what you are interested in, which is what I like the most because like leggings are all that fits me right now. That's okay because leggings are great. You can style them with anything. So I tend to always, when I'm shopping, I focus on cute tops and then my bottoms just kind of follow suit. I did get a couple of pairs of jeans that we'll see if they fit. If they work, we'll see. Uh, I have not had great luck with maternity jeans just for the fact that I'm really short and I haven't found any that are comfortable enough for me to want to wear. <laughs> when you create like a thread up account, you can set all of your preferences in your account so that automatically when you log in, it's already saved and it's not going to show you anything that's outside of your preferences. So like if you only are going to fit into a size 14 jeans, it's not going to show you a size two. Plus you get the great deals of thrifting with the convenience of online shopping, which I love. I'm going to have all the information in the description of this video. After watching this, if you guys are interested in checking out ThreadUp, you guys can go to the link in the description of this video and you can get an extra 30% off of your first order with ThreadUp when you enter the code Christy at checkout. So I am going to show you guys what I got. I'm going to try some stuff on. This will be the first try, so we'll see how things fit. When you order from ThreadUp, your order is going to arrive in this really cute polka dot packaging. This is everything that I got here. I got a ton of different sweaters, tops, and I got some pairs of maternity jeans. So let's try some stuff on and see how it fits. Okay, so this is the first outfit and I really like this top a lot. I like the jeans too. These are maternity jeans and these are from the brand Indigo Blue and they fit really nice up here. Very comfortable, very stretchy, but they are a little bit loose here, which is every jean on me. I do not have much of a butt. It just is what it is. So every jean is a little bit loose on me, but if I were to roll these up a little bit, pair them with a pair of cute boots or a pair of cute tennis shoes or something, I think they would be just fine. They're very comfortable. The estimated retail price on these jeans is $48. 
and I got them for $17.99. So they're, they're the perfect for me because they're not tight at all anywhere. I could wear these all day long. Frankly, they feel as comfortable as sweatpants. And this top is an old navy pullover sweater. I think it's got a really cute top. It's like a mock turtleneck. So it's not too tight that it feels like it's choking me, but it does give that really cute like fall up high enough kind of vibe. And this is estimated retail at 45 and I got it for $18.99. This is Old Navy and I think it's really, really cute. I'm gonna try a different top on with these same jeans so we can see how it would look, but I like this outfit, that's cute. Now this top is maternity and this, okay, maternity ones are kind of great because look, it's got like the ruched siding. I don't know if you can see it, but it hugs really nicely. But because it's maternity, it has extra fabric so it doesn't like sit up high like this. It sits nice and down low below my belly. Okay, I see why people buy maternity clothes. So this is Old Navy. Estimated retail on this one was $36. I got it for $19.99 and the condition on this one is like new. Like it's in such great condition and man, that's flattering. I really like this one. I have a feeling I'm gonna be wearing this probably the most out of everything so far at least because the way that it hugs is so unbelievably comfortable. Man, why don't I buy maternity clothes sooner than today? Okay, so this sweater is not maternity, yet it fits extremely, extremely well. It's very stretchy. So this is a size extra large. It is an H&M pullover sweater. Estimated retail price on this one was $25, and I got it for $8.99, and I love it. It's so comfortable. It literally looks brand new. It's so great. I'm so happy to have this one. Now this is a maternity top as well, and this is from Liz Lang Maternity. This is a size XXL. It's a little baggy on the bottom. I think I like things to conform a little bit better like that versus having like that flow on the bottom. The estimated retail price on this one is $71, and I got it for $17.99. I love the way the arms fit on this one. I'm not a huge fan of like the boat neck, scoop neck, Style. I like them to be a little bit more um, crew neck. These jeans are the Old Navy Maternity Rockstar. So these also have the high up top. These fit me the best, like they hug everywhere. The way that the top sits here almost feels like looser. This is looser up here. So it feels like I'd have to pull these up a lot, but they do hug my legs quite well. So if you're looking for a decent jean, if you're more of an apple body shape like me, you might like the Rockstar ones from Old Navy. I find them very comfortable. That's the thing that I like about shopping on ThreadUp for maternity clothes is that I'm not gonna be in this stuff for very much longer. It's going to be a relatively short time, like six more weeks. So I like the idea that I can buy things that are a lot less expensive, that are extremely discounted, that aren't brand new, that aren't gonna get very much life out of them. Because that's the thing is that when you shop secondhand, then you're giving a second life to those clothes. And then once I'm done with them, which I'm only gonna need them for a relatively short amount of time, then I can pass them on to somebody else and then they can get life out of them. So it's just, it feels better to me because maternity clothes are not cheap and it's always helpful anywhere that you can save a little bit of money. So I'm glad I was able to find some stuff because I have been busting out of the things that I do have. If you guys are interested in checking out ThreadUp, I'm gonna have the link in the description of this video. Right now you can get an extra 30% off of your first order with ThreadUp if you just enter the code Christy at checkout. And I thank you again so much to ThreadUp for sponsoring this video. And now let's get into the rest of the update of how 34 weeks is going. Tell me if it didn't just seem like I announced my pregnancy like two weeks ago. And I announced it at 15 weeks. So like, what? Where has time gone? I don't know. I have some things written in my phone, so I'm gonna be looking down because I'm gonna be reading to you some notes that I made over the last mm, three weeks since I did my last pregnancy update. Right now, at this point, big, big, big. And I am totally comfortable though. Like I'm very, very comfortable. I'm feeling a lot better. All that pelvic floor pain that I discussed in my last video when I was talking about that, that was mostly around 28 weeks and that's when it got really intense. Don't ask me why. This upcoming Wednesday, I have a position check and size check for baby, but 
I mean, I just have no idea why that 28 week time frame was so unbelievably painful. Maybe it was just that things in my hips were adjusting. Maybe it was that baby was extremely pushing on my cervix with his head or something. I don't know. All I know is that I'm so thankful that that pain is gone. Sometimes it's still there. Like I felt some pressure really low this morning. It kind of got better throughout the day. Also, if I put a belly band and pull my belly up, it seems to help a lot. Uh, it's so funny because one of the main symptoms right now, it's gotten to the point where the peeing is laughable. Um, I'm extremely, extremely thirsty. I don't know whether or not to attribute that to the gestational diabetes, which I'm pretty sure you guys know. Was that in my last pregnancy update or was that my last video? I did get officially diagnosed with gestational diabetes, which I'm going to talk a lot more about in this video. But I don't know if the thirst has to do with that, but I know that you do naturally get more thirsty when you have diabetes. So all I know is, whereas I never feel thirsty in my real life, like you guys, I'm never thirsty ever. I'm one of those people that like can go weeks <laughs> without drinking water. That sounds so bad and I know it is, but that's just the reality of my life. That's how it is for me normally when I'm not pregnant. I'm never thirsty ever. I have to force myself to drink water. Now I can, I can guzzle a 32 ounce jar of ice water in 30 seconds. I'm not exaggerating. It's like we went and got dinner last night and normally I would drink half of a glass of water with dinner. I drink five glasses of water. So that's how different things are for me right now. It's just, it's unbelievable. And I, I like it because it makes me realize like I know I'm hydrated and that feels good. But the peeing is off the charts. I have to pee so unbelievably often. It's insane to me. And the funny part about peeing right now is that I can't like when I'll be like, I am peeing my pants. Like it is happening right now. I have to pee so bad. I will sit down to pee and it is like, like that much. There's like nothing. There's nothing in there because it's not that I have to go that bad. It's that he's pushing so hard on my bladder that it gives me the sensation of I'm about to pee my pants at all times. When I do have to go, I have to rock backwards, sideways, sideways. I have to like move my body in these weird ways. Like I have to lean all the way back to like get the pressure of him off my bladder so that pee can come out. It's a very interesting time, but it's really not that bad. In the middle of the night, I'm probably waking up three-ish times to go to the bathroom. Not so bad, not so bad. So I've had this pain in my stomach for probably like five or six weeks. I brought it up to my midwives now three times because I don't know what it is. They don't know what it is either. Um, we are running some labs and stuff like that, but everything's come back normal so far. The pain is here, I shall show you. The pain is like right here and it radiates all the way down and it radiates from like here down and it's it's not there every single day but it is there often and it feels I, the only way i can describe what it feels like is that it feels like you got surgery and you're very tender and then somebody keeps poking that tender area but that tender area is on the inside or you worked out extremely hard you did extreme weightlifting to the point where you are so insanely sore and then somebody comes over and pushes on your muscles or like you are so insanely bruised you know when you have a bruise and it's so tender but on the inside and the baby will kick that area and it will like send me keeling over and like gasping aloud so i have that on my left side and then i also have a pain in my upper right quadrant not all the time that's the thing about all these pains that i'm experiencing is that they are random if they were all the time i think that my midwives and everybody would be a little bit more concerned but they're not they're not all the time this pain in my upper right quadrant it feels almost identical to back in the day when i used to have gallstones and i have i had my gallbladder removed like eight years ago or something i mean it's nine years ago, i don't know it's been out for a long time and um yeah, it feels like I'm having a gallbladder attack in a way, but I don't have a gallbladder. And I asked like about cholestasis and preeclampsia and all those things. I have perfectly normal blood pressure and I have no itchy hands and feet and, and all that kind of stuff. So like, I don't have any of the symptoms or signs of that. So it's interesting because I have this pain and it goes off and on. It's definitely worse sometimes after I eat, but especially if I have like carbonated beverage, always carbonated water. I don't drink soda or anything like that, but I was having LaCroix sometimes and I'm not having them anymore because they hurt me so bad. I assume what I'm experiencing is some sort of trapped gas, but it's like up here underneath my ribs and in my back. It feels very similar in that same location to where my kidneys were, like when I had my kidney stones. I don't know. It, 
it hurts, but it's, it's just more like a dull, un like a dull discomfort than it is like extreme pain. So I'm dealing with it. I brought it up to my midwives. We um, are running urine samples to make sure that I don't have any sort of um, urinary tract infection. Cause she said that many times those can go unnoticed in pregnancy, but I don't have any symptoms of it in any other way. No protein in my urine, everything seems fine. So we're just kind of playing the waiting game, assuming that a lot of the pains I'm feeling are just being pregnant. And this is the first time, you know, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm, I'm new to this. I also have this weird thing now where um, when I wake up in the morning, I have like extremely stiff hands. They're not swollen at all. They just feel like it, it would be what I would imagine like arthritis would feel like maybe or carpal tunnel. I don't know what it is. And then there, there is like pregnancy induced carpal tunnel. Um, it doesn't hurt. It just, they literally like, I have a really hard time bending them. They feel like completely stiff. Stiff, like I've starched them. After about 10 minutes, it's perfectly fine and they can bend and everything's good to go. But before that, right, right when I wake up in the morning, they're like, eh. I'm now feeling kicks up in my like rib area, but still baby is very low. This little baby has been very low this whole pregnancy. Like I, a lot of people talk about like being winded a lot and I was winded in the beginning, but I think that's like more of a hormone thing than it is a baby was large thing because I, w I was like still in the first trimester and I could like barely spit out a sentence without having to like fully breathe a hundred million times throughout it. But it's weird because I'm experiencing like no, <sighs> rib stuff yet we'll see because i'm 34 weeks now we'll see if in the next like six weeks it all ends up in my ribs but still baby just feels very low very like centered in the middle most of the kicks i feel are around my belly button like a little above my belly button area i feel a lot of pressure and lightning crotch down in that region the lightning crotch oh my god if you've never experienced lightning crotch, and you don't have to be pregnant to experience it, I've experienced it when I'm not pregnant, but just like huh, random bursts of like, oh my God, what's that feeling? But in pregnancy, it's so often where it literally feels like somebody is stabbing your cervix with a bolt of electricity. I don't know, it is, it is, it is truly something else. If you've never experienced it before, you are so lucky. <laughs> it is so jarring and it happens out of nowhere. Just like, you just can't and it's so, just, it's a lot, it's a lot, but it's not that bad. <sighs> Emotionally is the biggest change in me. It, I'm not an emotional person. I'll just explain the kind of person I am. I can tear up if I see something sad, but very, very often I'm almost like, I'm kind of level-headed about a lot of things. Like I see something and I'm like, yeah, well, at least it's not suffering anymore. Or at least, you know, or like Zach would say something and I would usually laugh. Like if he's like, saying something that's like off, you know, the off the cuff, or he just thought it was funny, or it's like a joke, or he's makes a little comment here and there, like I would laugh. Now I cry. And I am not a crier typically like this. I mean, I'll cry. I'm not like afraid to cry or anything, but I'm not somebody that typically just bursts into tears at the drop of a hat. But right now I am bursting into tears quite often. I am just an absolute emotional mess. Like the other day I was sitting down and I was eating, like I have to eat a protein before I go to bed. This is gestational diabetes talk. We'll get there in a minute, but I have to eat a protein right before I go to bed. So I have to eat like some cheese and some nuts before I go to bed every night. I was eating and Zach like just wasn't th sitting with me anymore. And we were at like the kitchen table, like the dining room table. And when I got done eating, I stood up and threw some stuff away. And I said, hey, where did you go? And he was like, oh, I had to leave a, um, from the sound of you eating. And this is something that Zach has done for like the 15 years we've been together. Like he doesn't like the sound of people chewing. It just bothers him. It's not my fault. I legitimately was crushed. Like that I, I was sobbing. I, I, it was like a betrayal that I had never experienced. I'm like, you left a room because of me. And I was just beside myself that I was so repulsive to him that he had to leave. And he was hugging me and I was just sobbing into his chest. And I, that is the kind of thing I'm talking about. That is the dumbest reason to cry. And I can look at that now and know that. But it was like, how dare you? Things like that. I also am going to transition into saying that my sister asked if we could come over for, um, she said that her fiance, she's a fiance. She said that he got a promotion at work and that she wanted to do something nice for him and she wanted our help. So we get dressed up and get everything going and we are going to go over there to help her have like this really lovely evening for him. Well, when I drove up, it was a surprise baby shower that my sister had made for me and my best friends 
had they had worked together to make this absolutely beautiful unbelievable baby shower and it was just like to this day one of the most wonderful moments of my life i did not ever think i was going to have a baby shower and it was so safe and it was so respectful and it was so wonderful and it was very very quaint very very quaint and it was truly the most wonderful beautiful thing i could ever even imagine the second i pulled up sobbing like i'm talking tears flowing down my face i probably cried for the first solid hour that i was there the way that they decorated this party was the most stunning thing i've ever seen in my entire life and i did not expect this like i did not expect this it was so beautiful it was like a woodland mushroom theme which they know me so well you guys it was so beautiful there was a gorgeous cake with these meringue mushrooms on the top and like cookie moss and there was little mushrooms everywhere and they were playing my favorite band the lumineers in the background and there was twinkle lights and candles everywhere there was acorns and pumpkins and squash and gourds and like all the things that i lived for in my entire life it literally felt like the most incredible thanksgiving harry potter feast fantasy incredible mushroom dinner party of my entire life i sobbed and not only that but the gifts that i was given at this party like marie made me the most beautiful woodland quilt i've ever seen in my entire life what who does that for people like who makes people quilts who does that oh. <laughs> I can't handle it. <laughs> such a little mess you okay no they had contacted some of my like youtube friends and gave people the heads up and and some like youtube friends sent me gifts because people can't be there you know because of what's going on in the world so like people couldn't be there so like it was like a socially distanced like baby shower where people sent gifts in sam sent me the most wonderful gifts this cutest llama that i've ever seen in my life in these little woodland mushroom books sam bought me a gift mm -hmm. sam knows about this mm -hmm. yeah. i wish she could be here i know yeah. oh. <laughs> you could put the llama <laughs> And I just got him bookshelves. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now we have bookshelves for all his books. Oh, I love it. Fernanda Pontberry, she sent us onesies that say like the one where Zach and Chrissy have a baby. There was like a Harry Potter onesie. And um, there are still some things that haven't even arrived yet from a couple of people. And like Alex sent the most wonderful, like he sent an oak tree, a literal we plant it oak tree and like you plant it and then it's like for our baby so when we plant it out in the yard we can watch it grow like as he grows and see how like each year he grows up the tree will grow with him i literally die and oak trees are like the most amazing coolest tree what a cool gift it was so sweet there are so many more things that people got like my dad you know he makes the copper boxes i talked about that in my pure cosmetics video that i did well he welded us a metal like copper pacifier it's so sweet he made like some little custom shoes for the kiddo and the most thoughtful wonderful gifts that you could ever imagine my sister got us this like beautiful play mat my sister wrapped everything in the most beautiful mushroom wrapping paper the cake was our favorite cake which was carrot cake and cheesecake mixed together there were so many wonderful gifts oh my god and marie marie made us these little peg people for my birthday like three two years ago and it's me zach and a bunch of our kitties and she added a little baby peg person like a little wrapped up baby <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> this is what i'm talking about the most thoughtful kind wonderful sweet angelic gifts i've ever received in my life like not just i can't even describe like one of my old co-workers she got us all these customized onesies and outfits i was legitimately like tears streaming down my face the entire time saw bing it was beautiful perfect amazing and the most beautiful wonderful way to celebrate this baby and i just have never in my life experienced a moment so beautiful and wonderful it was like the most wonderful thing i could have ever imagined so there was that <laughs> so my emotions have been all over the place i'm extremely emotional like to the point where i just am an actual 
mess. So I talked about this in a recent video, um, but it, it wasn't a pregnancy update, but we had our 3D ultrasound, which was so amazing. If you ever have the opportunity to get one, highly suggest, not nearly like expensive like I was expecting and such a special and wonderful experience. It was so, so beautiful and wonderful. You have a TV in front of you, it's really comfortable. And it was just so special. I cannot even describe being able to see our baby moving in real time and see his little face. I'm sorry, but I have the cutest baby that's ever existed on the face of this earth. I don't even need to see him in like HD in front of me to know that this baby's gonna be so cute. Look at that little face. I could die 1000 deaths at how cute this baby is those chubby little cheeks, that little nose, and his little smile. My baby was smiling in my stomach. Like I have a literal baby in me right now with a smile. <laughs> I can't. You know, there's one thing when you can feel them, but you've never seen them. There's something so special about that moment when I saw him for the first time. Cause you see him in like the little black and white, you know, ultrasound all the time. Cause I've had like two of those or whatever, or three and you see them in that and it's like it's so special and cute but you can't see their facial features or anything like that it's just like all babies look exactly the same in an ultrasound but in a 3d 3d ultrasound like there was something so wonderful about being able to see him that i felt like it changed my life and i know how pathetic that might sound to some people but there's a there's a bonding that happens when you find out you're pregnant but it's not what I thought it would feel like. I thought that the bond that I would experience would be like so connected and so like, oh, you're my son. And like, you would feel like you would just feel so nurturing over your belly. I didn't get that. I got, I have a protective nature where it's like, if anyone were to like swing anything too close to me, like, hey, hey, I'm pregnant. Like I have this very protective nature over my body and over this baby, but it's not like a connection. It, th that'd be like trying to connect with somebody that you've never met. That's what I'm talking about. Like you can feel that and it's not like you feel this immediate connection. Now some people do, but I think a lot of people feel guilty if they don't. I wouldn't say to feel guilty about that at all. There's really no reason why. Why would you naturally feel so unbelievably connected to something you've never met? So that's how I feel. And then, th then I did the 3D ultrasound and it like really realized him for me. Not that I didn't know he was real. Like literally, obviously I know there's a baby in there, but there's something about seeing that little face. And when he, he's moving on the ultrasound and like grabbing his little foot. I can feel that happening at the same time. It was a mind blowing experience for me. And it was just like really solidifying in what it was like pure bliss in that appointment. I was dying. I was so, I just can't even explain to you. So if you ever have the opportunity to get one, highly suggest it was a beautiful moment and one that I will never forget. I'm getting a lot of Braxton Hicks contractions now. I didn't know what those were gonna feel like either. I like to explain this stuff because I feel like a lot of times I watch these pregnancy updates, people like getting tons of Braxton Hicks and then you're like, what does that feel like? It feels exactly like what they explain it as. It feels like tightening of your uterus. It does not hurt at all, at all. At least for me, it feels like just tight. It feels tight and it feels like more than anything, not that my uterus is contracting, but like the baby is pushing his back up against me and that's what's making my uterus hard. Now, I'm well aware that that's not what it is, especially with how frequently it's happening. I know that that's not the feeling I'm experiencing, but it's any time that I stand for too long, uh, do too much physical activity, but when the baby moves a lot, it can happen. If I'm not drinking enough water, it can happen. And I know it's Braxton Hicks because, well, first of all, it doesn't uh, do any, like the baby doesn't come. Uh, and I've had a lot of, but if you sit down and change positions, like when I sit down and just drink some water, just like they say, it does go away. Sometimes it doesn't and it, and it stays for a while, but I talked to my doctor about it because I was cooking dinner the other night. Zach typically cooks dinner for us like every night. He's very, very helpful. I cooked dinner for us because I've been feeling so unbelievably unhelpful in life. And I think that's just from, you know, eight months of, eight and a half months of doing not a lot of stuff. Zach doesn't let me do a lot because, you know, I'm not supposed to be lifting a ton and I'm really supposed to be taking it easy. I'm growing a human, you know? But I felt so bad. I was like, I'm making you dinner. It took about an hour to make dinner. The entire time I was in a Braxton Hicks, like from the start to the finish, just the hardest stomach of all time. And uh, yeah, it's it does not hurt, but it is just very firm and very um, tight feeling. And it, it's almost like, 
it's just your belly, nothing in your back or anything like that, but it just feels like it all becomes a ball, like a big hard ball. So back to gestational diabetes, I'm so happy to say I just had my 30, it was like a 34 week midwife appointment and she was so incredibly pleased with my numbers. I've been able to keep my fasting sugars down if I do very, very simple things. So eating less carbohydrates, but I still eat them. I eat whole grain everything and I just eat less of it. And I eat just a lot of protein. Protein is what I've discovered is if I eat a carbohydrate, but I pair it with a really good amount of protein, I'm fine. It's when I don't that it's a problem. I'm happy to say that my numbers have been extremely good. I have had uh, really good fasting numbers. Out of a two week period, I only had three fasting sugars that were slightly elevated and by one, slightly elevated, I mean like it's supposed to be 95 and it was 98. Another one was supposed to be 95 and it was 101. So like I've had very, very few, but I've been able to keep it under 95 if I do this one trick, two tricks basically. If I eat a high protein snack right before I go to sleep, like I'm talking, eat it, go to sleep, I will wake up with good fasting sugars. If I skip that snack, I will wake up with higher numbers. I notice that when I eat protein right before I go to bed, and I typically will eat like a piece of cheese and a handful of pistachios, and that does the trick. And I've been able to keep my daytime numbers down, I've been able to keep my fasting sugars down, and that just is so amazing to me because I don't have to go on medication, I can give birth at the birth center, like everything seems great there. I'm so happy about that because I really didn't want to have to go on medication and I don't have to, so I'm very excited. I had to remove my wedding ring. I have not taken off my wedding ring in 10 years. We've been married for 10 years. I had to take it off because I woke up one night with, my oh, my hands were swollen, but they weren't like, they were like preeclampsia swollen. They were just like chunky fingers. And I woke up because my finger was hurting. And I looked down and I was like, this ring has got to come off. It was four o'clock in the morning when this happened or three o'clock in the morning. I went to the bathroom and I tried soap and I tried pulling it off and I was like, oh, this is not moving. And it was totally freaking me out. So I went downstairs and I got some like dish soap and I found this technique on YouTube to how to get a ring uh, unstuck from your finger and it totally worked. Now it hurt like a bitch. And for like three or four days after, it still hurt. <laughs> So it does work, but owie, um, ow. Some people use dental floss. I used, I cut the lining out of a swimsuit. You can use like tights. Um, the girl in the video uses tights. I'm gonna link the video in this video, but like she uses some like pair of pantyhose or whatever. And you like wrap it underneath the ring and then you like spin the ring off your finger and it totally worked. So if you ever have a stuck ring, you might wanna try that. I don't have like swollen feet or legs or hands or anything, but I did that day and owie. And that's really all I have to say symptoms wise. Uh, it's definitely, I'm like getting to the point now where I feel kind of similar all the time. Like I'm just feeling all right. You know, I, I can't do a lot. I'm really, really big right now. And I'm just, you know, trying to take it easy. I realize if I do too much, I get a lot of Braxton Hicks and it's just uncomfortable and it makes me feel kind of like, it's pro I probably need to like slow it down a little bit. It's literally like my body's telling me like, you need to chill out a little bit. I'm like, okay, okay, don't do it, don't do it. I just feel overall pretty good. These boobs. Okay, so they've gotten different. Um, mm, nipples change, boobs change. It's just what happens in pregnancy. They're going to, they're getting ready to feed a baby. It is jarring, but it is something that I just, at some point, we have to realize is what it, what it is. It's just frankly is what it is. Everything still fits me the same. Everything still seems the same. My nips, however, have changed. Um, the one on the right, it's like double the size of the one on the left. I don't know what's going on. Lopsided as hell. It, it, and the color change and like freckly darkened, larger, sens more sensitive and changing shape. Just like whatever, it is what it is at this point. I just, and at some point you have to be like, okay, I just don't care. I, that's how I feel about most of my body. I just will say, I just frankly do not care. It is what it is. And that's the same when it comes to stretch marks, when it comes to spots, when it comes to areola changes, it's just going to happen if it's meant to. I'm not doing anything and it's just happening. So it's what's meant to happen. Stretch marks, if I got them, it's what's meant to happen. If my nipples get huge, that's just what's meant to happen. And that's fine. Like for me, I'm just trying to remember that body changes are going to happen whether I like it or not. And we don't have to be ashamed of those type of things. They're just, they are what they are. 
and nobody should ever make us feel weird about it. Now, I think that sometimes, especially with pregnancy, many times we can see bodies online, I know I'm guilty of this, that are perfectly round, amazing, flat, belly buttoned bellies that are tan and shiny and perfect and they just, there's no extra skin, they don't have any stretch marks, their belly buttons are like flat, so they, they give you that like really cute pregnancy belly. And we can see that sometimes and think that ours are abnormal. I actually think that that falls into the spectrum of probably less less common than having stretch marks. Like, I mean, I'm gonna show you my belly. And these are actually really old. So this is making them look so much more intense than they actually look in person on camera. I gained some weight when I was 19 going to, into 20. And all of these long stretch marks showed up overnight and I was just shitting my pants. I just could not believe it. We can sit around and hate these things that we have no control over or we can just accept them for what they are. And for me, that's how I have to handle it. And I frankly just, at the end of the day, my body has done something I didn't think it was capable of doing. I didn't think I would ever be able to carry a pregnancy ever in my life. I was told I wouldn't. So to see my body do this and to have it create another human and to have that human be so cute and chunky to have this little baby in here like exist is a miracle to me so i can i don't know i just i look sometimes and i think it's so rare that we do see bodies with stretch marks and with you know you know marks in general or you know just freaking any belly buttons for crying out loud. I know how weird that is, but I just don't see it very often. And I think it's because a lot of people don't show that, or maybe people are ashamed, or maybe people, I don't know, just are unhappy with their bodies. And to each their own, nobody has to share anything that they're uncomfortable with. But for me, I'm so tired of not showing things because I'm embarrassed by them. Um, I, I have been a little embarrassed, I will say, to show my belly, but more or less because it doesn't look perfect. And I, you know, I thought about like putting some body makeup on it. And I was like, that is so dumb. Like, it's not what my body looks like. And I don't want to perpetuate that that's what a body has to look like in order for it to be lovely. My body's great. It's, I love my belly. I think it's so sweet. It's so fun to have this gigantic belly full of this gigantic baby. I'm just super excited about it. And at some point I have to stop giving a shit. I have to, I have to, because it doesn't matter. None of you are looking at me and are gonna remember me for my stretch marks after I die. Like none of you are gonna care. He's not gonna remember me as that. He's gonna remember me as the mommy that he loves. Well, I hope. I get it. Um, I, I don't particularly like them. I'm just trying not to care anymore, you know? It's just one of those things where it's like, I just feel like the, the more I'm going in life, the more I'm realizing that like all of these things that I thought really, really mattered, kind of don't and 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 the, another thing too is like all these anxieties that i've had my entire life about my body and i think it's because my mom passed away when i was 16 and she died really really young she was 44 and she died really really rough from a cancer it was really really terrible so i feel like that was going to be me like that's going to be me one day i'm going to die of cancer at 44 and i just have this really strong feeling that, that was going to happen to me and because i was so certain of these facts like that that was going to happen to me I was certain of the fact that my body would fail me forever. It would fail me forever. I, I can't get pregnant. Of course I can't get pregnant because my body's gonna fail me. Of course no, nothing good is gonna come of this body because it's never it never has. I've had kidney stones. I have cluster headaches. I have had gallstones. My body kind of hates me, you know, and it's always done the weird thing. It's never done the good thing. And then I got pregnant <laughs> and I am I'm pregnant after they told me that I would never get pregnant. I tried for five years on infertility medication. It just wasn't gonna happen, right? Well, it did. This is why I say like sometimes what, what this pregnancy has done for me is it has removed many of the anxieties and fears that I've ever felt about my body because I was sure, and this is, this is coming from a scared place and a fearful place, but it's just a reality. I was sure when I saw that positive pregnancy test, this isn't real, this isn't happening and something's going to happen. And I was sure that at that eight week scan we went to, they were gonna find no baby in my uterus, no heartbeat. Well, they did. They found a baby and they found a heartbeat. I also thought they were gonna find that it was an ectopic pregnancy. It wasn't. The genetic screening, I thought for sure there would be an abnormality, for sure. So every time I feel like something is going to happen and I tell myself with a certainty that it is, I've been proven wrong, time and time and time and time again. So what I have discovered is I don't know anything. 
And all of that is anxiety. All of that is fear. And all of that is trying to mentally prepare myself for the worst case scenario. But what it's done is it's t robbed me of joy before those experiences because I'm constantly worrying. So if one thing this pregnancy has done for me is it's made that worry so, so diminished in me because just because I feel like something is going to happen does not mean that it is. That's anxiety. That's not real and it's not helpful and it never has been helpful and it never will be helpful. I just have gotten to this point now and it's really changing my perspective on that. I am not in control of everything that I think I'm in control of. This baby happened when I didn't even know it was possible. It's one of those things where it's like, it's a true miracle. Like it just is. I just have to exist. I just have to keep eating and drinking water and this baby just grows without me doing anything really. And it's incredible to me. And this is how life happens. Like I was once this little baby and I was, so were you. All of us were, every single person watching this was at one point this little baby, you know? So it's a pretty incredible thing. Like when you think about it, it's just so unreal. It's unreal. So that's kind of where I'm at mentally. Um, I do not feel ready in any capacity for him to come yet. I really need him to at least wait till my due date, but preferably a week late because I need an extra time. I need extra time because we have not moved into the house yet. Obviously we're still at the other house. We're probably realistically, and I'm trying to think realistically to weeks away from being able to move in and that is really putting us on an extremely t short time frame like extremely short and that freaks me out so bad but at some point i just have to say it's gonna be fine i'm just really hoping this baby doesn't get here early because i really have the strongest urge to nest i really want to like wash all his clothes get everything set up we purchased everything else on the registry all that stuff on the target registry i did get the 15 percent off coupon for that as well and I purchased everything. So I have a breast pump, I have the Haka, I have the, um, what's it called? Boppy, uh, my breast friend. We got nipple butters and um, diapers, wipes, car seat, we have everything. So it's amazing. I also purchased the snoo and that came and we got a crib and a dresser on the way. We're getting down to the wire. I wish so badly, like if I could wish for anything, well, if I wish for anything, I wish the house was finished, we could just move in today. If I wish for anything else though, I wish we had like another 20 weeks left. This six week thing, <laughs> this single digit thing is no, 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 no. I'm not a fan, not a fan of this single digit crap. I'm, I'm now taking a breastfeeding course. So we finished the Hypno Babies. We finished the Positive Birth Company's online digital pack. We read the book. So I feel like I'm knowledgeable in that sector. We're also practicing at night now. So I'm like listening to my like positive affirmations and stuff like that. But not only that, I am now taking a breastfeeding course on the Thompson method for breastfeeding, which is a little bit different than lactation consultants teach. I have taken lactation consultant courses myself. Actually, when I was a doula, you have to take lactation consultant courses so that you can help mothers learn to breastfeed. It's different than what I, you know, was taught, but basically it's very intuitive in nature and I'm going to give it a try and we'll see how it works. Yes, I'm, of course, I'm, I'm very hopeful that I can breastfeed. I really, really hope that to be the case. I really like it so far. It's very intuitive. They show the babies breastfeeding and they show what they're talking about. It's not just like them speaking on it and, you know, you hear mom's different stories because a lot of the, a lot of what happens is the, what, the reason that I was naturally drawn to this course is because it talks a lot about how traditionally breastfeeding causes a lot of nipple trauma and how a lot of moms find it insanely painful to breastfeed. And with this method, it really helps remove a lot of that pain because instead of your baby like pushing your nipple up into the hard bony palate of their mouth, they draw it in into the soft palate. It's like a whole, it's not, it's not a whole different technique for crying out loud. It's still breastfeeding, but you can't like touch their shoulders and head. You have to like cross cradle them on their back and you have to let them find it. You don't do any shoving into their mouth. Like it's, very, it's different in that way. But apparently a lot of people that had previous nipple trauma and like really, really painful issues and just like cracking and bleeding and all of that stuff were able to find relief and help with this method. And you can see people's testimonies online. It's not just, you know, for the ad people are like, it's extremely helpful. So I thought I would give it a go. What can it hurt? And what can it hurt? You know, trying a different method, but it's the same, thing at the end of the day it's just a little bit different so that's kind of where we're at just look, trying to take those courses and learn and just you know try to figure things out try to get in the right head space try to get things prepared let me show you my belly i'm back up i'm gonna show you belly and 
that's that for the video. Here is 34 weeks. It's definitely popping out more right now. Here it is. The shirt up, just huge. This is why I need maternity clothes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys like this video. I love filming these. It's my favorite and I am just getting excited. And I thank you again so much to ThreadUp for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Again, if you guys are interested in checking them out, you guys can get 30% off of your first order with ThreadUp when you use code Christy at checkout and have everything down below if you guys are interested. But I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you at my next video.